Hello, my name is Dr. Megan Liu, and I'm a chief resident at USC's Integrated Thoracic Surgery Program. I'm taking eight minutes today to briefly explain how cardiothoracic surgeons are reimbursed. My intended audience is other residents who are interested in the world beyond training. A quick history lesson. In 1965, President Johnson created Medicare and Medicaid. In brief, Medicare is a federal program that pays for the hospital and outpatient medical costs of senior Americans. In 1972, Medicare was expanded to cover not only the elderly, but also the disabled and patients on dialysis. Medicaid is complex and mostly state-run, but intends to provide for the impoverished. In the 20th century, Americans who did not qualify for Medicare or Medicaid bought private health insurance through their employer or paid out of pocket for healthcare. In 2010, the Affordable Care Act invented a healthcare marketplace. This was created for anyone to buy private health insurance outside employer offered plans. People may not realize, but the Affordable Care Act also made new designs for how we pay for and deliver care. These efforts directly impact cardiothoracic surgery reimbursement. So what is reimbursement? When Medicare was created, so were CPT codes. These allowed surgeons to earn money for clinical activities, such as seeing a consult or performing a surgery. By submitting their CPT codes to insurers, Medicare or private insurance, dollars are paid out for each code. In the most basic sense, what you did equals what you got paid. But today, who is submitting CPT codes? Who's receiving all the dollars sent back? This depends on your compensation type and practice setting. If there's one thing to take away from this, it's that compensation, salary, and reimbursement are not interchangeable terms. A salary is a fixed payment to an employee. It may be part of or all of what makes up your total compensation as a cardiac surgeon. Most jobs right out of residency or fellowship offer a guaranteed salary. There may be an additional component of productivity-based compensation, which requires understanding a work relative value unit, or RVU. Instead of counting cases or CPT codes, a number of work relative value units are assigned for each CPT code and then priced. The intent is to standardize productivity amongst specialties. In practice, most jobs will offer a base salary plus a productivity bonus. That bonus is determined by your work RVUs. While as residents, we often ask questions like, how many cases do you do? How much call do you take? How many patients come to clinic? When it comes to your compensation, we should be asking, how many RVUs do you complete? And how can I reach my base RVU goal? Here we can see a 2018 Medicare physician fee schedule for a surgical aortic valve replacement. We see the CPT code, the assigned physician Medicare fee, and the RVUs allocated. So first we're gonna look at the academic practice setting. In the academic setting, most surgeons are employees of a practice group. The group pays each surgeon a salary. As a resident, we get paid like this now a standard wage regardless of how many hours worked or how many procedures completed. Academic practices decide salary based not only on the clinical services, but also based on the time spent on other expected activities like teaching or research. Let's look at an example. Dr. V is an academic associate professor. The university medical group is his employer and handles all his billing. The medical group provides him an office and an office staff. He makes a base salary, but every year he also has an annual bonus based on his excess RVUs or research productivity. By rising through the academic ranks, his base salary may increase. Earning grants may also help him rise through the academic grants, ranks or increase his base salary. So what is private practice? Well, that is not easy to define anymore. Like other industries, the private sector is diverse and how a CT surgeon is compensated will vary. True private practice surgery means you incorporate yourself as a business. Your business submits CPT codes to insurers, and you may even bill a hospital for call coverage. 
money comes into your corporation and then your corporation balances its own budget. For example, you have to pay out rent, malpractice, salaries to any office or mid-levels, and even to you, the individual surgeon. With time, your corporation may purchase or join other surgeons corporations to build market power. The physicians of today, however, wanted to get out of business, particularly millennials who have changed the work environment standards across technology and finance. Therefore, while you may be searching for a job that practices medicine at a private hospital, quote, private practice jobs are actually often employment compensation plans just like the academic setting. Let's give an example so that you can contrast. Dr. T owns Dr. TMD Incorporated and is a part owner of the Terrific Thoracic Surgeon Corporation. Dr. T and his partners complete their own billing, they pay their own expenses. For example, Terrific Thoracic Surgeons owns their office building and they employ three mid-level providers. Dr. T himself gets paid from his corporation, which gets paid from the Terrific Thoracic Surgeon Corporation. His take-home pay can be variable year to year based on the volume of procedures they each do. So this is a very brief overview meant to only be a snapshot in eight minutes. More education is needed, we think, to teach trainees about the basics of practice type and reimbursement. Beyond, more questions arise for cardiothoracic surgeons, such as how is call valued? What about the expertise provided at a tumor board, a transplant clinic, or a heart valve team? What benefits are offered for healthcare, retirement, disability? Anyways, we are out of time, but novel reimbursement schemes outlined by the Affordable Care Act are being trialed today and will likely affect the foundation of healthcare reimbursement. CPT codes and possibly even RVUs are going to be a thing of the past. Already, quality metrics and clinical outcomes are the basis for some bonus structures. Being present and involved in policy changes are what will provide for cardiothoracic surgeons in the future. Thanks for listening.